Amicor Podcast. I am your host, Chad Porto, and joining me as always is the glorious one himself, the co-host with the mostest, Marcus Green. Marcus, how are you? Good. Glad uh, back with, the, uh, with Zach in the building. Yes, and, and like the, the groundhog that occasionally pops up every other week or so to let you know that, yes, it is in fact still Wednesday. <laughs> Zach, you're Tyler Pew Pew Duncan. God damn it, Zach, I forgot to post the show from last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's still Wednesday. <laughs> you guys don't know what we're talking about. You didn't listen live or check out the uh, the Twitch replay. Um, you did post the show last night. <laughs> but still on Twitch, damn it. Still there. Twitch.tv backslash rushing underground. Just not available on download yet because I'm super fucking lazy at the moment. Not lazy. I've somehow shifted all of my work responsibilities to the midnight hours because. I don't know. It's not like I got to be up early to look at the news. And then I'm not saying that to be like condescending. Like, like before, I would wake up and I would have to check the sports wire. I don't need to right now. <laughs> There's really nothing happening outside of NFL free agency, so, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so twitch.tv backslash comic wrestling underground. There, there, there it is. And also twitch.tv backslash comic and game core. That's where we're on. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll have to do that right after the show ends. I'm sorry, Zach. I'm so sorry. Not really. I'm mildly <laughs> perturbed, though. Mostly at myself. Mostly at you, though. Not for anything that you've done, but just because you're you. And because it's still Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, last night we had a running gag where I feel like every day is Wednesday. It's my groundhog. And I still feel that way. It's still Wednesday. So, gentlemen, we are on the mini series of The Boys, The Highland Laddie, I believe is what it was called. Yes? Yes. Anyone else feel like they told a uh, two issue story in six? I mean, I feel like even two issues is 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 pushing it. Yeah, yeah. Really, could have just been one. <laughs> yeah, Marcus thoughts. Yeah, this was uh. Yeah, they could have told us a one. Yeah, I was trying to see if it had uh, any elements of the, of the Frenchy thing, but it, it didn't. It didn't have a pop of flat a Frenchy thing had. Zach, did you read the Frenchy one shot? Yes, I did. Oh my God, it's so good! What was his name, oh, Marcus? God, Black Lord. Pierre. Black Pierre, oh, we yep. love it. Dad had some fun with that. Ha ha! I got your girl. Ha ha! Ha ha! I got your bitch. Ha ha! <laughs> I I will take you down with my bigot. <laughs> what was that line in A Knight's Tale? And because most of uh, the French is Pope. No, no, the Pope is French. <laughs> <laughs> and most of all, because the Pope is French. The Pope may be French, but Jesus was bloody, bloody well English. You're odd. <laughs> I don't think Jesus was English. I'm just, I'm throwing that one out there. Don't no, think he was English. very much not. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure he was a Jew. Just throwing that one out there. Letting it land where it may. <laughs> yes. Very Middle Eastern. <laughs> as it were. Hard Middle Eastern. Maybe Mediterranean might be more apropos, but he looked more Maybe. like he looked more like my ancestors than he did look like your ancestors, Merlin. <laughs> so anyway, I'm Italian. Mediterranean Israel is part of the Mediterranean. Y'all need to get on board. We're ethnically cousins. Come on. Zach is in. I don't know what the fuck he is. Irish. German. Something. Mostly German. Duncan's Parts an English Irish name though. I know. Well, my my mom was mostly was pretty much mostly German, and my dad is Scottish and Irish and stuff like that. So your I'm like fifty percent German, pretty much. Your mom is mostly German, but you you guys have have a English last name. I'm starting to think maybe you have a lot darker ties than I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> Why would a German have an English name? <laughs> I'm I'm jesting. My my family was in the mafia. <laughs> 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 
that's one of the reasons why my great grandfather left Italy because he didn't want to be a part of that bullshit. <laughs> y'all are like in the organized crime and like y- y'all think fascism's super sweet. Mm, I'm super out of here. Uh, he missed the Titanic by two weeks. That's not even a joke. Lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you man, know, it, unlucky you. <laughs> it's shit like that that always like pops in my head. It's like, there could have been someone on the Titanic or someone got the fucking plague and we wouldn't fucking be here. <laughs> yup. Fucking rat shits in a baguette. <laughs> Half of France mm-hmm. falls into decay. See what happens. <laughs> See what happens. France is already in the decay. France has been in the decay ever since goddamn 2002. Fucking no. You may not fly over our espace. Bitch, we are three-ninths of your goddamn military. We are flying over your goddamn airspace. I fucking hate France. <laughs> it's like the one <laughs> country that doesn't blend in with, with the rest of Europe. <laughs> like, y'all are just assholes. And then you're coming over and putting your, your fucking French stank on Canada. Canada does got enough issues, man. <laughs> they don't need to be dealing with your Frenchiness. Oh, I feel so bad for Montreal citizens. We are from Montreal. And we are French Canadian. Now you're just a biggity, biggity, baggity bitch. Anyway. So, <laughs> I don't know where most of that was going. <laughs> All right, uh, Zach, you are our returning host. Welcome. Welcome, indeed. Welcome, indeed. Uh, you had a nice, uh, I don't know if it was a staycation, a go-cation, a quarantine Pretty much a staycation. Quarantation. Ooh, we're gonna make that a thing. Ooh, <laughs> we're making that. There a thing. it is. Come join our quarantation. You can go on uh, a vacation, but still stay in quarantine. All of our rooms are made for one individual. <laughs> they are four feet by six. You will stand in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Not the only one that was <laughs> that found surprised that like found out yesterday. Apparently, because uh, certain people are trying to blame this on. Uh, I know Japan that did their uh, some ass ass of dubbing this of uh, the Kung Flu. Yeah, I heard that. Listen, I'm torn. Wow. On one hand, that's super racist. On the other super. hand, that is amazingly good wordplay. <laughs> 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 like I'm, I'm up against it because you all know me and my and my wordplay. I'm a big fan. Puns, mm. <laughs> turn of phrases, can't get enough of them. Kung flu, fantastic. Super racist, but fantastic. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to give the devil his due on something. Like, all right. You might be the greater, the, the, the creator of all sin, but thank you for anal. <laughs> right? Sometimes you just got to give it to the, to the devil on that one. Like, all right. Sodom was pretty cool. <laughs> So, <laughs> this is a weird show already. <laughs> the boys does this to us. It, it brings out the inner weirdness that is prevalent in just about every other episode we do. <laughs> so, Huey's off in Scotland. Yeah. he He's a Scottish boy, and he's re- reuniting with friends. And, you know, anytime anyone ever wants to defend Garth Ennis for saying, he writes political satire, and he, he puts the pulse on, on certain issues, and no, he's a fucking dick, and, and he insults people for fun. So, Enos, did, did anyone else notice that every religious figure in this series is drawn and written to be a complete and total putz? Yeah, I, I, I'm starting to pick, I started to pick up on that. I wonder if Garth Enos has an issue with organized religion. <sighs> we also get to meet Huey's friends, and their names are irrelevant. We're just going to call them Guy in a Dress and Mask Face. And, and the, the gas mask guy didn't make any sense because apparently he's wearing a gas mask because he stinks? Right. But then why is so- he the one wearing the gas mask? Yeah, and his, well, I, I understand his parents wearing gas masks because they live with him, but at the same, but why the fuck does he have to wear one? I, I guess there's some type of self-aware acknowledgement of like, look, I get it, and you're gonna get it. So like, but 
It's it's weird. Is it maybe only because of like his breath, maybe? maybe? Yeah, this this this, will, this whole thing would work so much better in my hero as a quirk. <laughs> right? <laughs> they would actually explain it. So there is two best friends, and they're apparently psychopaths because they like throwing rocks at dogs. So right? Huey missed them. My heart was broken. <laughs> Right? Huey missed them? Like, this whole six-issue miniseries did more harm to the fucking story than I think anything else. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Huey hates his parents. Why? Because they're abusive. They're they're condescending. They're evil. They're racist. No. They're nice. They're sweet. As, I, they will look as, out for their boy. Huey said himself, if there's any problem with them, is that they baby him too much. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it was... It was... It was awkward at first, and then when as the story goes on, it was like you said, it was a bit too long. You kind of get it, but I think that I think that's I guess the inherent beauty about the whole thing is because like just the, the contrast of what his life was, what it has become, and then obviously what it can be if he goes back to it, and like that whole thing of like the grass ain't always greener type of scenario. Like I guess this is and you and Zach will be obviously experts on this, like, Superman's uh, Dark Mercy thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, um, like, it's weird, like, like, in, in, in his other scenario, his boy being a girl would be, like, I guess to the level of where he's at with the boys, but because he's been through what he's been through with the boys, it's like, oh, well, okay. Yeah, well, dress now, I still got your ball, your, 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 your pickle and toggles, or whatever they call it. So, pickle and tacos. <laughs> but because he's been through what he's been through, like it, it'll get a couple lines, and then we're moving on from it. So, uh, when you said Dark Mercy, um, were you referring oh, to the, that that plant thing? Yeah, the Black yeah. Mercy. Yeah, yeah the yeah, Black, Black Mercy. Mer- okay, because I, I, at first I knew what you were uh, like. I I jumped the gun on what you were referring to. I'm like, oh, you're talking about the Black Mercy. And then I, I sat there and I'm like, he's a dark mercy. Am I, am I, am I so far out of the DC loop? I, I have missed something. <laughs> <laughs> has Marcus, has he surpassed me? <laughs> have I been replaced? <laughs> so I knew what you were talking about. I just wanted to clarify and make sure I wasn't some big dummy. <laughs> so apparently, uh, you know, if you haven't been keeping up with the series, uh, last or the week before last week, uh, Marks and I talked about how Huey uh, found out about Starlight's um, enjoyment of sausages. I think that's fair. Uh, and uh, how she got into the Seven and, and all that. And it played kind of off of what we saw in the show, but it was a lot more kind of... Mutual, <laughs> not mutual. Um, it, it wasn't nearly as fucked as what we saw with uh, the deep. Still fucked, but the deep straight up like assaulted her in a lot of ways. But in this regard, it was more of a voluntary kind of thing. Um, not exactly sure what that was, you know, uh, a, a commentary on Garthiness. I don't know. Uh, and now, you know, Huey's dealing with the fact that his girlfriend's a super, and, and worst of all, that she fellatioed the three strongest members of the uh, the seven. I mean, and I th- if being a trick. Yes. And, and now that one I get. That one I get. But he yeah. even kind of says that it's it wasn't that it was a train specifically, at least, you know, when we in this is six issue uh, a bit, it was more about her doing it all. And he even says, like, I know it shouldn't matter. I know, you know, it was before we even met, but it still matters. Um, so I, I th- A-Train was bad enough, but I think it was, you know, the, the totality of it all. For me, I, you know, I, I think I would have a problem with it, too. Not because of me being some prude fuddy-duddy, but believe it or not, I, I believe myself to be a man of principles and morals. And I don't want to be with someone who would sacrifice what they believe in to get something. And that would be a very deflating revelation that that's who I'm with. 
that this is a person who is so you know focused on on a goal that they would throw away everything that they stood for to get it. I I, I think that is one of the most pathetic things a human being can do. It, it, it's it's one thing to not have like that type of principle or or mentality, but to have it and then throw it away, I mean, like that to me would be a real destructive revelation in a relationship. Uh, not necessarily the act of it, but what it what it implies in this specific instance. Um, we're we're going to go Maury Povich on this question. Uh, uh, Marcus, you are not the father. <laughs> uh, but <Yes>. also... <laughs> right, finally. <laughs> Twelve time visit... <laughs> 12 times the job. Um, Marcus, you know, looking at this from Huey's point of view, do, do you understand his, his his emotional reaction to this? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and you know, again, me always, I guess, trying to peel back more layers of certain things. I, I think it's... Um, you know, just on top of everything that that's you know going on with with the boys, because I think one of another thing that I guess the you know um, the secret power or the, the secret to what makes this particular issue better, even if like we said it is kind of extended, is like he's finally getting to say stuff that he he's been wanting to say, like either with or to the boys, but he hasn't been able to get it, like because of how Enos writes. Um, like the scenes and the scenarios, he's he's always about to get some of this stuff off his chest, mm-hmm. or you know he, he's getting there, or trying to frame it up verbally, and then some kind of way, Billy kind of just, you know, he's almost um, they almost make him a spin doctor in the moment, yeah, almost instead of after the fact, um, and of course that just works along with that just that Billy Butcher charm. But now he's kind of getting the 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 voice this stuff, um, and so when it comes to her, like I get it, it's 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 the whole thing. I mean, he's been you know canvassing and, and casing these a holes, and then everything he's been getting from from her. And I and I would imagine to an extent it's weird, but maybe and maybe he'll say this eventually. But uh, like it kind of reminds me of how Billy reacted when he found out. Um, that uh, him and Starlight was a thing, mm-hmm. right? Because of how like, just how close he was to the situation, he immediately had to go to the extreme to justify like his true emotions mm-hmm. for the, for the uh, thing. So with this, like I get it, I get it. I just think it's it's really the, the main point about it is just compiled on top of everything else because this was I guess <laughs> we hate using this word here. She was his safe space from all that stuff. <laughs> One could argue that uh, maybe, maybe just a smidge that Huey was a bit of a snowflake. Uh, Foreshadowing. Ah, oh, that was good. Um, yeah, I mean, you set that's me never up. Not gonna be a thing now. <laughs> yes, I did. That's never gonna not be a thing now. God, those people are egregiously uh, just. Uh, oh, we'll get that. Mind f. We'll get that. Yeah, yeah, we will. But uh. But yeah, like I said, I mean, I think that, that that was his safe space, and then to find out that now that's an epicenter for all the the BS, it's it it sucks because now he can't escape it, which is why it took that to actually make him go home. So you know, I guess that's full circle. Thackeray, do you do you understand the uh, the Jerry Springer esque reaction that Huey had? I mean, I I kind of do to a degree. I I thing about it as Marcus said is that any Starlight whatever was you know Hue- Huey appreciates what he does with the boys but he also like he is very much disgusted or may I even disgusted but he he hates he hates the means to the end mm-hmm. of what the boys do so he hates all the filth and and the muck that they just drag themselves through. And some of them drag themselves through quite happily, seemingly. And that's, that's just not who he is. So Starlight was his, Starlight was his reprieve. He, he was 
she was his retreat. She was he. She was the one bright spot that he could say, "This is the one thing that's not that has not been tainted by everything else." And then he finds out she very much was tainted by everything else, more so than he ever really could have thought. So I. I I can under I I can kind of understand that I I I get the the feeling of all of a sudden just everything you thought you knew just and everything you thought you could hold dear was just cr- just crumbles in front of you and you don't know what to do so I I I get it to an extent. There is something to be said though about hypocrisy because think about what what she did. Uh-huh. It, it's a bit debasing. Yes. Right. We can all agree. Having to wear white after Labor Day, terribly debasing. Gosh, ah, that whore! Fucking kill yourself. <laughs> but Huey has straight up murdered how many people? <laughs> right, like he's got one um, to his name at least, and I'm sure there's at least two or three others. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> you know, I I have to wonder exactly, you know, if this was a better writer. Let's be honest, Garthy and this isn't. This, that would be the point. That he's mad at her for doing this thing that's a bit debaucherous, but isn't inherently evil. Yet he, here he is, you know, raking the face off of people. That would be, under a better writer's scope, the point to his anger, but instead it's just him, you know, you know, looking his nose down at Annie, and it's just like... Eh. This is terribly contrite. <laughs> yes, you know, I keep it, waiting. I keep waiting for it to get there to him and finally admit to be like that. It's not so much of what you did; it's what I've done, and now you can just now you're just a constant reminder of what I've had to, what I've actually done to people. That I, would be that I would be on board with. I read a lot of the later issues, and I don't think that's ever. I read, um, I think the arc after this, the, um, the, what, what's it fucking called? Proper preparation and planning. I read that yeah. part. Okay. That's a lot. Well, that's, that's crazy. I mean, it's, you know, like, like Zach said, like, if I run to you, I can't run from it anymore. Mm-hmm. Cause you're in the middle of, I got to face it, which with everything, with everything we've got with this writer, that 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 simple concept is is too emotionally mature. <laughs> it's too emotionally mature for this particular uh, author. Not that, not because he can't, just because he just don't want to. I don't know if it's because he doesn't want to, or if it generally is because he can't. I don't think Garth Ennis is particularly that strong of a writer. I think he's very macabre. I think he he embraces the you know, the obscure really well. But I think as far as, you know, actually understanding the human condition, I don't necessarily see a lot of that in his work. But then I, again, I think yeah. he's just a big putt, so I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm best judge. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Garth Edis is, and and this is even before now, but he's one of the original guys that, or what, not the originals, but one of the early guys that's just like, I'm gonna put this stuff out there. It's it's gonna sound kind of interesting and kind of deep, but it's mostly just for chalk and yeah, all that shit. Yeah, it's and, and maybe I say maybe I say that because of what we got with that that uh, that great part with um, mother's milk. Mm-hmm. Like, cause that that was that was fun. Maybe that was on accident. Like the the, the deepness of that. And we got like with the whole thing with his family, and then obviously that last page was was, was crazy. Uh, maybe that was a happy accident, uh, but it's like it's 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 instances of like okay, this guy was clearly uh, going somewhere else with this, um, and not that didn't want to be on the nose about it, but it was deep. But like you said, maybe it's it's just like he can't help but be macabre, like you said, macabre and just kind of juvenile and and. and um, you know, like something like Black Pierre can only be done by somebody like Garthian, um, which which was out, you know, makes him I guess the best and the worst guy even with a property like the boys because of we, 
in each of these issues, we see what it could be if written by somebody who had the purposeful emotional intelligence to somebody who was like trying to use it as anything else than what it is. But you know, may, maybe that's the reason why we're doing it so we can look at the the instances in which she's not taking, I guess, the roles less traveled. I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, so. very, very possibly. Like when you think about them, you know, the, the the last thing that I think of is emotional maturity when I think of Garth Ennis. Uh, we also find out Huey's big, dark, Batman-esque backstory. He once threw a rock that hit a puppy. He felt so bad he swam in to go save it and took it home, and he's carried that guilt for 20 years. Burn in hell. Honestly, I, on one hand, you know, he did the right thing, took the puppy home, and he, he's had guilt about it. On the other hand, why would you ever do it in the first place? Right? I mean... Just that whole sequence from the first shot of the of the dog just whimpering on the rock in the middle of the river, just like crum- I crumbled. I was like, ah, oh. and then it just escalated from there. It's like, mm, Huey, I had so much respect for you up until now. Yes, yeah. because <laughs> it took me back to that when he was first coming home, and it, then they, he passed the dog. He was like, don't get sentimental. I'm like, what was that about? And then it's like, oh, okay. Huey, the real villain. Nah, who's the villain? <laughs> <laughs> now who's the villain, Huey? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I can just, I, I can just see at the end, big climax, final boss battle. You know, I'm not gonna say who it is, but like, they're like, you, you think all the things that I've done was terrible, Huey? I never threw a rock at a puppy. <laughs> and then Huey just breaks down crying and kills himself. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you even write that in? Like, it makes him so unlikable. And then you have him crying about it in the back of a bus while he's talking about how he doesn't like his parents. Like, why is Starlight even trying to get with this guy? (laughs) Like, damn. Right, and Starlight just laughs the whole thing off. Like, you were supposed to be innocent in this, too. Yep. Fuck both of you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe... uh, maybe because she actually like needed somebody who would be both naive and forgiving enough about the period blood stuff. Oh, uh, and we're, somehow we're back on that. <laughs> Every thirty days, we're back on that for some reason. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Freaking Dwayne Wade, and LeBron tonight. <laughs> Fucking just tossing up all over the place. Yeah. So uh, I think a better uh, version of that story would have been if Huey hesitated and the dog fell into the river and the big uh, dude in the dress saved the puppy instead and Huey lamented about his cowardice instead. I think that would have been a much better story, but instead it just makes Huey look like he's a giant jagoff. Because I'll tell you what, I was that age at one point. Shocker. I never felt the urge to throw a rock at a dog. Like, you kidding me? I don't even like raising my hand in anger against dogs. I, I've had, I had two ones. That's because it, it fucking, dude, it, this dog got loose, and it chased me down, and it, like, ripped at my shirt, and I punched as hard as I could. I was, like, nine. Didn't punch him hard. But I'm like, why is this dog trying to fucking maul me? So. Still love dogs, though. Nine-year-old me was a little bit shooked up, but, you know, 33-year-old me is still pretty... All right, all right, all right, all right. Almost, almost getting murdered by a homicidal uh, maniac that could turn into a cloud and almost kill him to death. Mm-hmm. He can get over that. It's yeah. this dog that's bringing him back. Right, like, you know, get, getting getting humped by by something in the sewer. That that's hard, but can't get past this dog thing. Huey is a poorly written character now. Thank you, Carthenus. Uh, we'll be covering the rest of the series throughout the, the next few Quarantino months. Quentin Quarantino. <laughs> that is actually a joke I made on Saturday's show. Game Core. Check it out. We reviewed uh, the 2005 Destroy All Humans. By the by, finally finished downloading Doom. Now it is time for me to practice what happens when quarantine fails. <laughs> Did I make that joke to you, Zach? Yeah, I made it off here, didn't I? No. I didn't? You didn't. Okay, so here's the joke. The joke goes something like this. 
<clears throat> I, I started, I got a bunch of games for 25 bucks from the PlayStation Net store. I got Destroy All Humans, Destroy All Humans 2, Resident Evil 2 Remake, and Doom 2016. And I had this thought, oh. and I, I said it off here to somebody. I guess it wasn't you. And I said, Resident Evil 2 is the game you play to get prepared for quarantine. Doom is the game you play to get ready for when quarantine fails. <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank you. Uh, I am now the one they fear. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Stuff. Uh, any final thoughts on this week's Garth Enos Slutathon? The series is wearing me out, man. I'm telling you, the 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 twist with um, D- uh, Black Noir is worth keeping up with it, but I don't blame anyone who's uh, getting a little uh, tired of Garth Enos' uh, mockery. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> Maybe because I'm, I'm just so fresh to it that it, it helps me better, but I am finding all these different type of ways to turn my head sideways um, that just aren't natural. But but it, it it is making me. I mean, I, I was already longing for the show to come back, but I am definitely uh, just appreciating what they've done um, with the series, the actual the live action series, and in so many more ways than even I did, you know, on first viewing. Because now, when well, somebody was like, "Man, it's, that the show, the show's just so weird," I was like, "You poor." Sapless soul, you have no idea. If you only knew, and this is still tamer than fucking preacher. Yeah, and we had to have all that train together as as viewers of that show. You know, as as weird as as the boys has been, and and both the show and the comic, at least there's no you know Hitler redemption arc. <laughs> we had to draw the line somewhere. We had to laugh at it sleep on it and then back away from I still just find it funny that uh, our space or whatever his name was he's was like yeah I redeemed Hitler and like, the first chance Hitler gets he runs away <laughs> because of course he would he's Hitler oh god you ever wonder if there's people who have the last name of Hitler in today's world that have no relations to him and just they, they just fucking change it the minute they get it I wonder about that is it no, I feel thanks. like it will have hap- had to have happened already, right? <laughs> right, like you know, uh, shockingly enough, Porto is actually a very common name in both. Uh, I think it's Brazil and Italy. So, like, imagine like someone with the last name of like me doing something terrible. Like, would I just go get my name changed? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, man, there's some weird irony in the fact that one of the greatest historical a-holes got act- <laughs> in TV form at least literally got redeemed by one. Right? It It, it is uh, it is a bit uh, ironic, don't you think? It's like rain. Sorry, I'll, I'll never, I'll never sing that song again. I'm sorry. So, speaking of sorry, Marvel needs to be sorry. We need to talk about Marvel. What do they do? Besides, for the live action Captain Marvel? <laughs> uh, yeah, Captain Marvel's a bad movie. And save space. Zach, have you not heard about this yet? No. Oh, boy. So, you know, uh, Marvel has a, a hero group called the New Warriors, yes? Mm-hmm. Well, meet the new New Warriors. I sent it on Skype. So the new New Warriors are just the worst things in the world. You, there are five heroes, and and we'll get to the worst ones at the end. The first one is called Screen Time. Zach, would you like to guess what Screen Time is? Don't read the article yet. Because I want to say this to you as as it's written. 
<clears throat> Screen um, Time is a meme obsessed super team whose brain became connected to the internet after becoming exposed to his grandfather's experimental internet gas. But why are comics dead? I don't know. <laughs> oh, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> now you Internet can see gas. Now you can see augmented reality at real time maps and can instantly Google any fact. Why is he using Google as his primary search engine? They literally have been found to doctor search search engine results. Does this make him effectively a genius? He sure acts like it does. The best part is, I don't even know who this is, but the dude who created him, his name's Kibblesmith. If you were to ask me what fake fictional name created FaceTime, I would say Kibblesmith. The new warriors have been zeitgeist characters from the beginning. You get edgy skateboarding and Night Thrasher in the 90s and the reality TV team in 2000s, now in 2020. We have the new warriors who have never grown up without the internet and one character who appears essentially to live inside of it. Oh, we'll get to them. We got the only character that I think might be all right if it was in any other context. B negative, although his name is terrible. A teen living vampire exposed to Michael Morbius's blood as a child in a rogue but life-saving medical procedure. All right. That's fair. Uh, the pro- I, I dig the premise. He's still the a negative. Does does not roll off the top. No, the look is fine. I'm not a big pink guy, but I like the 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 goth '80s chic look. Uh, he still ages mm. like a regular kid, but it has all the abilities of Morbius. He's also obsessed with the music and attitude of classic long past decades. This is where I get really pissy, like the '90s and 2000s. Fair enough. We're old. I don't need to like it, though. Fuck you. The world is a vampire, and so am I. The world is a vampire. B negative is the goth kid. When he was a baby, he got rogue. B negative ages, but designer Luciano Vesicio took brilliant inspiration from the 90s Spider-Man cartoon and gave B negative the leech suckers that the animated versions of Morbius had in his palms. That's actually not a bad idea, but super fucking gross. Always skeeved out when I saw the Morbius hand. Then we have Trailblazer. <sighs> Why must we pander? I don't know. Her magic backpack <laughs> is actually a pock dimension with infinite space from which she can pull out or use random objects. It's not always so under So she's her... Dora the Explorer. <laughs> You're not the first one to make that reference. She claims to get her power from God, but not the God you're thinking of. She's from a group home who volunteers at a senior center. Great. She's spreading the corona. When this mysterious threat shows up and Night Thrasher runs to the rescue. And because she helps him, she ends up in the crosshairs of the new outlawed. Law. That's a dumb name. She wants to help people, but she doesn't think of herself as a superhero. Because she's not. She has a backpack. She's a, a, a serpa. <laughs> Thanks for getting me to the top of this mountain. <laughs> You've achieved your goal for the day. Oh, God. <laughs> but let's get to the worst. <sighs> Snow- <laughs> Snowflake in safe space. Snowflake, who's drawn to be a woman, is non-binary, which just means that she's, I don't know, are they, there's, I don't fucking, dude, gender is so goddamn stupid. <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. So they don't feel like anything, so they're an it, a them, a they, they're, I don't fucking know. 
She's got blue hair. Sorry, they have blue hair because, you know, we have to make sure that the man can be pink, even though we already have a pink dude in this. So I guess we're just going to, I don't know, pink it up. And it's not it's not being done pink-wise because it looks good fashion-wise. They're doing it as a, as a point of emphasis. That pink's not a girly color. Yet they give I mean, Fred, the blue sn- uh, snowflake. Fred Hart told us that in the 90s. Right. They give uh, snowflake a light blue color because it's more feminine. So, like, I don't know. You fucking tell me what's going on here, Marvel, because you're sending some goddamn mixed messages with your color palettes. They're twins, and their powers are dumb as hell. Snowflake can make a snowflake shuriken, like a throwing star that looks like a snowflake, which means that she'll never make the same one twice. <laughs> Dad joke. And Safe Space can activate a force field around anyone else but himself because that seems like a useful power. Until you shoot the guy making the goddamn force field. Oh, by the way, they're psychic twins, so it's Zan and Jace, only worse. Is he the white mage? <laughs> and you don't fuck with the white mage. <laughs> Frieza fucks with the white mage. <laughs> Either down, out of mana, zero res. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Safe space is big, burly, sort of stereotypical jack. He can create force fields, but he can only target them if he's protecting somebody else. Snowflake is non binary and goes by they, them. Ah! Oh! Man, that's a jock? I thought that was Sunny Kiss with blue hair. <laughs> no, Sunny Kiss is the one with the pink hair. <laughs> Although Sunny Kiss could be the one with the blue hair. They're yeah. both Sunny Kiss. Hey. You, yeah, yes. Sunny Snowflake and Sunny Safe Space. Uh, Snowflake is a non-binary and goes by they, them, and has the power to generate individual crystallized snowflake-shaped shurikens. The connotations of the word snowflake in our culture right now are, are something fragile. Because snowflakes, by the literal definition of what a snowflake is, is in fact fragile. Yes, that's why they got the name. <laughs> <clears throat> we don't, uh, that, that definition is obsolete. Someone throw a sock puppet at Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need something firm enough for him to you know, understand that Matt Hardy played out. <laughs> but something soft enough to let him know that he's still our buddy. <laughs> uh, so Snowflake is the person who has the more offensive power. Oh, gee. Because we've never seen the twin motif where the girl twin has the better power before. Zan and Jace, would you like to comment on this? Form of a good idea. Shape of never going to happen. Snowflake is a person. The idea is that they would be mirrors to one another and complement each other. I hope whoever created this gets fired. It's one thing to make five characters and have like a combo set like these twins be bad. Okay, you tried something. Fair enough. But for the most part, all five of these heroes suck. One literally. And the worst part is Screen yeah. Time, who maybe has the best look, is essentially no different than, you know, Ben 10 having sex with Cyclops. I don't need to think about that. So. But now you are, Chad. Now you are. <laughs> so. so. We have a, a pro, I guess, a productive internet troll. Um, this is the the uh, the awkward twins, the uh, the obese ambassador and um, vampire lad. I don't. Know. It, it's, it's bad. Vampire lad would be his name in the Legion of Superheroes. Yes, and and he would actually be so well much right. better than being like. <laughs> so, Marx is right. You got you got the troll. You have the social justice, you know, non-binary warriors. You yeah. have the uh, self-diagnosed B negative. <laughs> I'm self-diagnosed bipolar. Okay, sure. 
you have the overweight uh, minority with the magical backpack, basically just Doherty Explorer if she grew up in New York City eating ho-hos and bonbons all day. So I'm supposed to what? Want to buy this? Why, why, why would I want to buy this? Like, I, I kind of, I kind of get that they're trying to capture the, uh, they're, they're, they're going towards the younger market. Right. But nobody wants to be associated with these people. <laughs> these are all the negative stereotypes. Yeah, literally. Th- these are all stereotypes of what they're trying to rally against. I just, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think there's a. I mean, we look see every day that the crowd that, that wants to be associated with this. It's just, I guess now Marvel's not smart enough to realize that that crowd isn't the one that's going to go into these damn shops to pick the book up. Yeah, yeah. They'll talk about it all day, on Twitter. They're not going to buy it. No. <laughs> Fuck no, they're not going to buy it. <laughs> you know, we millennials have been given shit for far too long. It's time we started to pay pay it forward. Gen Gen Z isn't going to be buying your comics right now, Marvel. And even if they were, I don't think they're dumb enough to go for an internet troll who looks better in other renditions of the character. The two worst designed characters I've ever seen. Some fucking wannabe Fall Out Boy emo dude, and then overweight Door the Explorer. I, I don't think anyone's going to be sitting here going, yeah, them's the people I want to hang with. Can you imagine if Cyborg, while he was, you know, scanning the internet for information, he said he says, I'm gonna consult Google. <sighs> but Google's the greatest place on the world. Don't you know, Zach? It's the Google. Is it Google also like one of Disney's only living competitors right now? Yep. <laughs> That's actually a threat. <laughs> yep. Google and uh, um, Apple. Uh huh. <laughs> so, you know, way to pander to the future universal overlords. I, I think when it's all said and done, uh, whoever's going to defend this, and I'm sure there's going to be people that defend this, need to realize that this market that they're aiming for. They don't want to buy this comic. This is going to be a poorly received comic. There might be initial success around issue number one just because it's a brand new issue with brand new characters with a lot of hype, be it negative hype. So that generally does create some demand. But this is going to be a book that dies fast. And Uh if it doesn't, the reason why it doesn't is because Marvel wants to have it as some type of token you know, uh, endorsement to, you know, diversity. It's one thing to have a book that's successful. It's another thing to have a book that's not successful, but you still keep it on. That's a sign that you're just doing it to kind of have, you know, some type of, of credibility. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the idea. Um, if a book's not selling, fucking trash it and just find something else that will. But also, why why are people making such polarizing characters? I don't get right. That. Like th- that that to me is, is like why why is comics trying to polarize individuals? Because you have to remember something. Right now, unlike any other time in our country's history, we are more polarized than ever. Mm-hmm. So to double down on the polarization of your fan base is to segment it off significantly. And that's not something you should be doing. I know representation matters. And, and if you watch anyone who's anyone, they'll tell you representation matters. And, and they'll speak at it ad nauseum. And that's fair. They have a point. But at the end of the day, you need to worry about keeping your fan base whole. That means if you only have X amount of, of books or stories dedicated to X amount of different characters then so be it, because at the end of the day, you need to make sure that in a year or two, you still have a publisher, because there were rumors that DC was thinking about shuttering its publish- publishing arm altogether. Partly because of the fact that the comic sales have dropped so mightily since the uh, launch of Rebirth. 
Now, that's because they put fucking Brian Michael Bendis on Superman and, like, half the audience left because why the fuck would anyone want to watch that nonsense happen? But it's also I... a bigger issue beyond that. And Marvel's had a hand in this and DC's had a hand in this. And the problem is, is as independent publishers like IDW, Dark Horse, and, and, and others are starting to build up their, their own kind of, you know, net worth, if you will, they're predicated on surviving by the comics stores that they sell to. And comic stores are only going to be in business as long as Marvel and DC are publishing at the same time. So you have to realize that the ecosystem of comic book sales in a physical sense, even a digital sense, are more tenuous than ever before. So you can't keep making characters that are designed to piss people off. Because what ends up happening is, is the people who create these characters then go on to make the next Spider-Man or the next Superman or the next Wonder Woman or the next, you know, um, Static Shock. And then all of a sudden, these fans who were with these characters for so long then see these writers that they don't respect, they don't like, and they don't trust are taking over their favorite characters, and then they leave. That's what happened to me. I saw Bendis moving on to Superman. I'm like, I'm not sticking around for this nonsense. And I've heard nothing but mild to bad reviews about his run. So, like, I don't know. It'd be like putting uh, Michael Bay on Batman. I really want to see that right now. I guess it feels like in their mind, to, to your point, they actually feel like this is the way that you solve those issues. And being just on the nose about it. So, yes. And, and, and they're right. This is like walking into a room, seeing a person suffering from an illness and going, we need to make a medicine to cure them. And we all go, yes. And then I pull out mold and start working on the mold. Marcus starts working on electroshock therapy. And Zach goes, how about we just stick butter in their nose? And we all just look at Zach like, no, that's not what we're... What are you, stupid? <laughs> And Zach's pushing a yeah. piece of butter into his nose. No, it'll work. This is the you butter. Don't know what? <laughs> this is the butter in the nose of creating yeah. new characters. Yeah, and I mean, because I would hate to go back to this, this uh, yet another poorly executed trilogy. But it feels like, um, like the difference between what we're talking about, like being just being Magneto, as opposed to having freaking. Uh, Lawrence's mystique, every other thing going mutant and proud. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you went there. <laughs> uh, mutant proud. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Oh, God, Jennifer Lawrence. Remember when people used to like her? No. <laughs> that was great. That was great. <laughs> she was in. The, she had like a cameo in like a Buffy the Vampire student thing or whatever. I think. I got. I got to look for it. It was like the only thing she's ever been in that I thought wasn't trash. <laughs> so, I, I applaud Marvel for trying to create new diverse characters. I. I, I do sincerely. But going in the route of making them unlikable or unrelatable is just stupid. How many people who read comics, who read Marvel, is, is going to identify with these people? Oh, maybe 5,000? That doesn't really seem to me like it's worth it, but... This is some pandering ass pandering. And the problem is, like, as bad as Snowflake and, and Safe Space is, my real biggest issues with fucking screen time. Right? What is internet gas? I, ah, oh God, this is some fucking dumbass bullshit. This shit's gonna give me a heart attack. It's pissing me off. <laughs> Yeah, all of a, all of a sudden, uh, Batonium's looking like a real good idea. <laughs> yeah, Batonium no longer seems like the biggest waste of time. So let's see. Um, 
Superman and Lois appears to be recasting an established Arrowverse character. Let's see who this is. According to the character description on the Illuminati... Uh, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, this doesn't really count as an Arrowverse character because I didn't even know he's on the goddamn Arrowverse. Uh, General Sam Lane will be recasted for uh, for L- Superman and Lois. That's not really news. <laughs> that, that, no. <laughs> Here I'm thinking they're going to recast like Diggle or something. A guy who showed up in, like, two episodes in season one of a show no one really cares about. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fucking controversy. <laughs> he got us. Uh, there is a Justice League Mortal documentary. That was the, uh, what was that? Um, the guy who did um, Mad Max. What's his name? Do you got do you want Tom Hardy? N- no, the, the creator. Oh, Gibson? No, the creator, oh. George Miller. <laughs> According to a press release from Purebury Productions, the much delayed documentary is expected to start back up in uh, later this year. It was centered around the rise and fall of director George Miller's failed 2007 team up Justice League. Mortal. Zach, do you ever wonder what Justice League Mortal would have looked like? I didn't know that this was a thing before. Oh, yeah. It's been talked about before. Maybe not on our show. After speaking with the cast and crew off and on over the last five years, we're confident we have a wonderful project to bring to light for all the pop culture fans around the globe, said producer Ryan Unicom. It kind of feels like the world wasn't really ready for this the first time we tried to do this in 2015. With everything going on in the world now, feels like the right time to look back at what may have been and celebrate what actually was. Uh, the film will feature interviews from cast and crew with the looks at unseen production and f- uh, art, photography, and video uh, footage documenting the pre-production. Renowned artist Cody Boslogic Abdo will provide the promotional art with cosplay. cosplayer Chris Stanley will recreate the pre-production designs. However, it seems the documentary might not have Miller's blessing. While George Miller at this stage has no intention of taking part, we are hopeful that once... He sees our project as a thoughtful celebration of the work that thought that took place. We hope it may change his mind, the statement reads. So let's see if we can actually see, because there was a cast for this, and I think Ar- 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 Army Hammer was in this. Hmm. So let's see. Uh, Justice League Mortal Batman Wiki. Yeah. Let's see what we get there. Uh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Army Hammer is Batman Bruce Wayne, DJ Katrona as Superman, Megan Gale as Wonder Woman, Adam Brody from the OC as The Flash, Hugh Keyes Burns B- Byrnes as Martian Manhunter, Teresa Teresa Palmer as Talia Al Ghul, Zoe Kazan as Irish Iris Allen. Iris Allen, Santiago Cabrera as Aquaman, Jay Brutchell as Maxwell Lord, Common, die, this project needs to die, <laughs> as John Stewart, and the late, great Anton Yelchin as The Flash. That's who was the, uh, the cast was going to be. Barry Allen, I should say. They're, they were going to have two Flashes. So outside of Common... I, I, the cast isn't terrible. And Army Hammer is someone who I think gets a really bad rap. He's a solid actor. Just isn't in a lot of good things. Uh, gentlemen, thoughts on, uh, thoughts on, uh, Batman Justice League Mortal? Marcus, what, what, what do you think? Oh, uh, that's, it's interesting. Um, This was my first time uh, with any knowledge of this, but um, yeah, I mean it's 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 definitely interesting. Some of those actors and actresses uh, definitely could use that that uh, level of visibility. Specifically, somebody like Armand Hammer, who like 100% agree doesn't necessarily get uh, the best of raps. One half because of the projects, and another half because of his name for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think that that could be interesting. Um, I think I probably need to see like exactly what they do with it and and 
obviously maybe a trailer, but um, it is intriguing. It's something different to do around the character or whatever uh, than, you know, going back to square one. So. Well, this isn't a film that's coming. This is a film that was in production in 2007, but for various reasons was scrapped. So George Miller, the guy who ended up doing uh, the Mad Max series, um, he was the one who was going to direct it. But, you know, DC wasn't too happy about it. And I think at the time they were conflicting over what to do with the Batman property because this was around the time Batman was about to launch into The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger. That was 2008, I believe. So I, I think it's one of those situations where the film just had too many conflicting ideologies about it. And uh, instead, they opted to go um, and just tank it because I, I I don't know how many people would like to see Army Hammer as Batman, but I mean I would have. <laughs> but this yeah. is a a uh, trailer for the um, for the uh, documentary, and and I, I'm with you on that. I'd like to see a trailer on the documentary first to see just kind of what it's going to look like because I. You know, when you talk about an idea that could have been, sometimes it, it, it often leaves you feeling empty inside because you see something and you wish there was more to go with it. Yeah. So. So we got some other news. Uh, actually, Zach, uh, your your thoughts on this? Um, yeah, I mean, without... I mean, I, I myself like Army Hammer. I don't know if he would have been a good Batman or he wouldn't have. Um, but yeah, without knowing any more real details about it, the move, the, uh, it could have, the movie could have been something really great or it might not have been. It, it may have gone down the realms of Nicholas Cage, Superman and the justice league pilot from the nineties. <laughs> Because that was a thing. We do not talk about that pilot with anything but reverence. <laughs> Good sir, we do not belittle the Justice League pilot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have some dumb Arrowverse news. <laughs> so Arrow uh, Crow creator Mark Guggenheim said that he tried multiple times to get Justin Hartley to appear on the CW drama. I'll tell you, Justin is someone I've been trying to get on Arrow for years, Arrow co-creator said. It never worked out, and Hartley did not make an appearance on the show. He didn't? What? However, just because Shot. Guggenheim could not get Hartley, that does not mean that the series could not haunt a small role character. I did send them the request. Could we borrow the costume from the archives? They said yes. But they said yes with a, ca- a lot of caveats, not at least which no one can wear it. You can't get it dirty. So we put it on a dummy, so, nearby, so thereby we satisfied that loophole. And as far as not getting it dirty, hopefully whoever at Archives provided it to us never actually saw that episode. <laughs> that's pretty fucking funny. Um, so that, that's a little bit interesting news. Uh, and then, uh, this just seems dumb. Uh, Guggenheim also goes on to say that the uh, he intended to use the series finale to introduce another major DC character. And no, we're not talking about the Green Lantern. Speaking on the Fake Nerd Podcast, Guggenheim laid out his original ending for the series. He revealed that he once wanted the finale to imply that Oliver inspired Batman to become a vigilante. But that didn't come together for several reasons, not the least of which was Batwoman's Arrowverse debut. So we can thank that show for fucking up even more shit. I'll tell you the way I originally planned on ending it. You'll, you'll certainly see how this is different and why it's different. I always saw the show ending with Oliver's death, but Oliver's death in the actual finale. Then I had kind of had a little bit of fantasy that Oliver would die and you'd end up with some sort of news broadcast talking about his legacy and that would sort of become the voiceover. And then you would go to see this rooftop in a whole other city and on the cut of a, of a thug or some bad guy would crash into the frame. And on the cut of a thug? Oh, like a, a transition what? onto a bad guy. Okay. Uh, into the frame, wow. ha- having been punched off screen, he continued, and these pair of black boots would come down right in front of him and there'd be a flutter of a scalloped cape, and the voice would say something along the lines of Oliver, Oliver Queen inspired a whole new generation of vigilantes. <laughs> I had to. Uh, the implication oh, being, of course, that he inspired Batman. So that, of course, didn't happen for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is Batwoman came along, but that was my original concept. Sometimes, 
All it takes to be a hero is to put a coat around a little boy and tell him, you don't have to watch Batwoman. That show's trash. Hero. That's the hero we deserve. <laughs> he looks at him like, not Bruce, but everyone? <laughs> everyone. Uh, what's more, uh, the unprecedented crisis on Infinite Earth's broadcast moved up the timetable on Oliver's death. Instead of dying in the series finale, Oliver sacrificed his life to save the multiverse and the crossover event. The following two episodes examined his legacy and showed how that inspired his daughter Mia to become a hero in her own right. So the spirit of Guggenheim's original idea made it into the final episodes, even if the Dark Knight himself didn't. Boo. 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 The Arrowverse is dead to me. <laughs> yeah. It once was oh, I, so good. I, I get it. Uh, I get it. Marcus, you're still you're still trudging along and enjoying what you can. Um, yeah. Do you find it harder to watch, or are you still very much a fan of it? Oh, uh, I'm a, I'm a um, I'm a fan, um, but. Uh, a fan with a, a sensible fan, if that makes sense. as much as possible. Just because at this point, it's it's just hard not to ignore like the blatant flaws and whatever. Like it's like well, you know, uh, we compare with I guess WWE a lot, a lot of times. It's not questionable about like the level of talent they have or what they do with them. That's you know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll predict, um, a lot of times these actors ended up saving a lot of this garbage material. Um, cause uh, they just they just awkwardly wrote uh, the, I guess Dean Kane's character off screen like they killed his character off screen on Supergirl, <laughs> and I, I would imagine like the reason why they didn't bring yet another '90s star that has failed us in real life. Um, I guess they didn't want him back because of uh, his uh, political affiliations at the moment. Um, so they kind of just killed him off screen and then had Kyla Lee's character do a lot of the heavy lifting as they. Uh, kind of ushered his la- little ass arc off, but yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, like you said, I'm just I think you put it perfect. I'm kind of just enjoying what I can. Uh, you know, I think I think it says a lot about where they are now that they allowed an actual real life couple that actually had really great on screen chemistry uh, to fit into the world the way that they did on Legends, like uh, Brandon Ralph and, and his wife. And actually, uh, let them go. And not let them go on their own accord. Like, they didn't want to leave. But for whatever reason, they wrote them off a show that is very hit or miss, depending on, uh, you know, the, the material that we like. I, I get the appeal of Legends, but it's just not going to hit for everybody because of the, the just asinine premise of thing, which they embrace at this point. But, again, um, it is Legends. So for them to, to kind of force them guys out in the way, I'm like, now, like, who's running the ship at this point to let those two go? Um, so, you know, um, yeah, yeah, Batwoman still lasts. Uh, we hoping for some some good stuff with Star Girl, but you never know. So. Yeah, and Star Girl's been delayed because of the coronavirus outbreak, shutting down a lot of production studios. Speaking of the outbreak, Ev- Evangeline Lilly is walking back her dumbass comments. She, uh, she, she did an interview where she's like, yeah, I'm still taking my kids out. We're still living life because, you know, I'm not going to be impaired by this or whatever the fuck she said. Uh, in a March 16th Instagram post, Lily implied she would not be keeping her family indoors as concerns regarding the coronavirus group. Just dropped my kids off at gymnastics camp. They all washed their hands before going in. They are playing and laughing. Hashtag business as usual. But, boy, did they come to drag her. <laughs> Uh, Maggie Grace, who uh, uh, was from Lost, but I think most people will, will know her from uh, Liam Neeson's daughter in Taken, uh, and Game of Thrones, and X Men star. Although X Men star is a bit of a laugh because she was terrible in those films. Sophie Turner, they came to collect the bounties, <laughs> uh, and um, she decided to clear the air, apologizing for her initial post, express concern, regret for her comments, and the initial larger implications. Hello, everyone. I am writing you from my home where I have been social distancing since March 18th. I've been doing it since March 18th of 2002. Get on board. (laughs) (laughs) 
When social distancing was instituted in the small community where I am currently living, at the time of my March 16th post, the directions from the authorities here were that we not congregate in groups of more than 250 and that we wash our hands regularly, which we were doing. Two days later, those directives changed, and despite my intense trepidation over the socio-economic and political repercussions of this course of action, ah, uh, you are a cunt. Please know that I am doing my part to flatten the curve, practice social distancing, and staying at home with my family. Science isn't political, ya bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Denying it is. Oh, this, this hurts my head. This is, this is like going to an auto mechanic and saying, hey, your Zach, what would be a thing in a car? <laughs> Spark plugs. Your spark plugs need to be changed. And you go, no, you're just a mechanic. I'm going to ask my governor what I should do. Governor goes, your spark plugs are fine. I see my spark plugs are fine. No. We have experts in these places for a fucking reason. Like, yeah. could, could, yeah. God damn. Yeah, it's, and I like her too. Um, but I'll say as well, in the in the in the scope of how I could view her as an actual person, uh, but mostly her work. Um, yeah, I get it. She seems she's very much has come off like a minimalist, one of those people that don't have TVs, very outdoorsy, whatnot. Doesn't really allow herself to kind of get into, um, I guess, the technical space and uh, the human withdrawal. I guess a lot of people fallen into but it you also seems like one of the people that got to be taught the hard way by life like she would literally have to like have like a parent or like a, a older person that's very dead to her end up in the ICU behind this before she like so uh yeah um this stuff is really real people like before she delivered one of those statements and that sucks because we're seeing a lot of idiot people like that right now but uh yeah you, you should have just kept this to yourself if you was going to have your kids out there, just do what you go do, but don't freaking voice it like you're freaking being anti-establishment. Like, you know, y'all know they, they put this virus on us, right? Like, at, at this point, can we just do what we got to do to get past it? Like, whatever you view it, however you want to contextualize it so it makes sense to you, that's cool. But at this point, when we're literally seeing all these bodies drop, can we just do what we got to do? So this don't continue and we don't be sitting here next year around this time on the same garbage. Yeah, I'd like this to be over as fast as possible. You know, just saying. Thackeray, any thoughts on Evangeline yeah. Lily? I mean, I kind of, I kind of get it, like. Uh, I I agree with what Marcus said. Like I get not wanting, like I get not wanting to, like, go completely overboard with this thing. Because I'm of the opinion of that. Yes, social distancing. Yes, wash your hands. But it's also like people are overreacting like fucking crazy. Like I should not be going to a super to a superstore, uh, a grocery store, and seeing the where once there was toilet paper, now there is nothing. It's like. Calm the fuck down. But at the same time, you also don't need to... You don't need to be going around and be like, oh, yep, I'm doing all this. I'm living life like normal. And just pu- putting it out there like you're like a badass rebel or you're just like, this is fucking nothing. There's no, there's no big shit going on. Because, well, yes, don't overreact. This is also This is also a serious thing that's happening. <laughs> Just find, find the middle ground. Don't go crazy in either direction. As with anything else, don't go crazy in the in the quarantine. Don't go crazy in the anti-quarantine. Just find the middle and just let's just get this shit done with. I concur. Do you concur, Doctor? Uh, 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 why did not just concur? So apparently COVID-19 may keep Brock Lesnar from WrestleMania. Boo-hoo. Oh. 
Let's see. Uh, due to the COVID right. outbreak, WWE has shifted its operations drastically. Uh, performance Center, blah, 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 to further complicate the issue. There's a possibility Brock Lesnar may not be granted special privilege to leave his Canadian residence and travel to the... He's already yeah. filmed it. Yeah. But apparently the big dog is out. Wait, wait Roman Reigns is out? Yeah, apparently he told him, uh, uh, you know, about uh, him being potentially uh, more compromised than most about his uh, leukemia. situation with leukemia. Yeah. About his match with Goldberg. See, I had just read yesterday on, uh, I think it was WrestleZone, that uh, they had confirmed that there was a third person sitting out of WrestleMania due to quarantine. But they weren't going to name him or them because, you know, it wasn't something that was out there yet. They didn't want to be the ones to do it. So apparently, you know, this falls in line with what, what, with what I read. I didn't think it was going to be Reigns. I thought it was a possibility. Damn. That just means Goldberg's going to be champion longer, which I'm okay for. I mean, I mean, it's funny. I, you know, he was one of the first people I thought about because of, you know, his, his scenario. He was actually one of the first people I thought would, would just kind of ixnate his whole thing because of how, you know, I would imagine he's always in a state of uh, being possibly compromised. But, you know, you're also one of those guys like, you know, I'm here every night, that whole big deal. So. Yeah, I guess it came down to an eleventh hour thing, or, or maybe even before that. Like you said, if this was potential rumblings before that, then you know they kind of just letting the news slip now. So, well, that's going to change some things for uh, next week for sure. We got to do our uh, WrestleMania preview. God, <laughs> can't believe we're still doing a WrestleMania preview. Um, anything else? Touch on you uh, to. to Touched you inappropriately that you guys want to talk about? Well, not inappropriately, but it was cool to see. It's the freaking uh, fourth uh, uh, celebrated anniversary of BBS. That was cool the other day. Ah, Batman v Superman. So good. It's so good. History will be kind to you, even if the present wasn't. Zachary, anything else kind of tickle your fancy? No, not really. All righty then. Let's wrap this thing up like a Christmas present. Twitch.tv backslash Comic and Game Core. YouTube.com. Search Comic and Game Core on YouTube and find us and, and download and subscribe. Uh, comic g- g- words. <laughs> comic Core can be found in all of its past podcasts and broadcasts on Podbean at realnerdcorp.podbean.com. Go to realnerdcorp.podbean.com. I'm parched. I'm thirsty. That's why I'm stumbling more than usual. Go to realnerdcorp.podbean.com today and download all of our past shows, including Making an Impact, which will be up in the next hour or two. (laughs) Because it's perpetually Wednesday. If you would like to take it on the go, you can do so by downloading the Podbean app to your mobile device or tablet today and searching for Real Nerd Corp on the Podbean app. We are also on YouTube.com, which I already mentioned, Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P, Instagram at Real Nerd Corp. We are also on the website at RealNerdCorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com. Marcus can be found individually on his Twitter at ParadoxKid, P-A-R-A-D-O-X-K-I-D. That is me. You can also find him on his other podcast, The True Penny Show, at True Penny Show on Twitter. That's T-R-U-E-P-E-N-N-Y-S-H-O-W. You can also find Zach. He's on Twitter, but don't worry about that because he's also on Instagram and DeviantArt. And Instagram and DeviantArt is where you should follow him on. So go to Instagram and DeviantArt and look for Radiance2020, R-A-D-I-A-N-C-E-2020. That's Instagram.com backslash Radiance2020 and DeviantArt.com backslash Radiance2020. Or is it Radiance2020 Radiance uh, backslash DeviantArt.com? Uh, DVR.com backslash Radiance 2020. Okay, because sometimes they do the, the thing first and then the dot .com. Yeah. You can find me on Twitter at Chad Nerdcorp, C-H-A-D-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. I'm also on Instagram, that's it, <laughs> at Chad's photo at C-H-A-D-S-P-H-O-T-O-H-U-T. We'll be back tomorrow, me and Swisher, to talk about Chuck Season 5, finally. We had a delay last week because uh, Swisher had to take care of his GF. 
she had her wisdom teeth out, and he wanted to make sure he was there for her. He's such a good boy. Everyone give Swisher, a, a, give Swisher Cyber pats on the head for being a good boy. Good boy, Swish. <laughs> so, unless we have anything else to say, Marcus? You want to tell you that's a no? Swish? Nope. Zach? There it is. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, sorry. I guess son of a bitch was his last words. All right, then we're done for the night. We're done for the day. We will see you guys next Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard for another edition of the Comic Corp Podcast, brought to you by RealNerdCorp.com, found on twitch.tv backslash Comic Corp Game Corp. With all that being said, Marcus, it is time to take us home. Quarantine yourself, me.